and so on, and our businesses and workplaces and wherever we are. Yeah. I wonder if we can pray before I uh, go to the Word, eh? Father, we thank you, Lord, that um, your kingdom is in us and it's amongst us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to contrive anything. We don't have to make anything happen because all we have to do is have a heart that says your kingdom come, your will be done right here and also wherever people are watching this this morning. Uh, let your will be done amongst us as it is in heaven. That's the cry of our hearts. And so, Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, that as we look at your word and, and uh, discuss your kingdom, God, I pray that, um, Holy Spirit, that you'll just be who you are amongst us. You're the spirit of wisdom. You're the spirit of understanding. You're the spirit of revelation. You're the spirit of truth. And I pray that we will only hear the truth you want us to hear from, direct from heaven. I pray that you'll give us insight and understanding. Let revelation flow in all of our hearts and minds. Everyone who's hearing this this morning. And we just commit this time to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Siriana mentioned Matthew 13, 52, which is actually our main verse for School of the Kingdom. And um, it's very powerful because, um, you know, we, we have good foundations in the Word of God and good foundations in the ways of God, the things of God. But, you know, every season God's got something new for us. And we can't go into a new season with old mindsets. <laughs> can't go into a new season uh, just doing the same things we've, we've always done. You know the, uh, the definition of insanity, don't you? <laughs> to keep doing the same thing and expect a different outcome. <laughs> Apparently that's the definition of insanity because it's impossible to get a different outcome if we don't change some things. And God wants to, God's got a different um, uh, thing he, he wants to do in the earth, but that means that he's about showing us some new things so we can adjust and so we can really continue to partner with him and, and, and go forward the way he's asking us to, to produce different outcomes to the past because it's a new season, amen? I wonder if we could go to Matthew 6 and um, Matthew chapter 6. And probably the best known verse in this chapter is um, verse 33, um, where Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So first is proton, which means seek above everything else. So above all else in life, seek his kingdom. In other words, it's got to be the number one priority. And then righteousness actually means God's right order, right according to God. So, so righteousness is not, not only um, you know, purity from sin. Righteousness is a way bigger thing than that because, yes, we must live a life pure of sin, but you know, God's right order is not only about in our hearts, but it's also about how we think and how, therefore how our lives are because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so then if we're saved and going to heaven, um, but we still think like the world, well, then we're, we're not going to produce the kind of outcomes that we could in God because our lives are dictated by how we think. Yeah? Everything about our life flows out of how we think. And, um, and so God's actually in the business right now of changing how we think. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, if we're going to be a different people across the globe and produce different outcomes for His glory and for the sake of the advancement of His kingdom, then we've got to think differently for a new season. And so God's actually changing how we think. <laughs> yeah. And, and in that, he's actually changing some of our theology. <laughs> I just let that one hang in the air for a bit. <laughs> but it's true. You know, I remember back in the 70s that, um, you know, there was a, a real move of the Spirit with, with praise and worship, you know. And... Um, and I'm going to say, it's been a long time since I was in a meeting where this lady led worship. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> All right. But you know, I was in a Pentecostal church, um, but the, um, the most expressive we were in worship was we clapped. You know, as we sang. <laughs> that was it. You know? and, and we considered ourselves liberated. <laughs> right? Because there were so many churches that didn't clap. And, and we didn't just have an organ, we had some other instruments, you know. And we had this young guy who was younger than me at the time, and still is. Um, and, uh, you know, he used to play his electric guitar with a fuzz box, you know. Well, they don't have fuzz boxes anymore, that was a 70s thing. But, you know, this horrified the people in our church, you know. <laughs> but then there was this church down the road that got a revelation that 
what it says in the Old Testament about worship, that we should dance and jump and, you know, shout and all these things, that, that this is what God wanted to do. Anyway, we had a guest preacher one Sunday night in, in the church that I was in. I was only a teenager. And, um, uh, and this particular uh, preacher was known to this other church down the road. So they all came and joined us for this Sunday night service. So during the worship, they're all yahooing and, you know, having a good time. They're dancing and shouting and clapping. And, you know, and, and our church is there like this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was some... You know, some interesting stuff said after that. You know, how dare they bring their stuff into our church and how dare they conduct themselves with such a lack of decorum in the house of God. And <laughs> but God had to change our mindsets. Come on, are you getting this this morning? He had to change how we thought because His Word is limitless because He's limitless. His kingdom is limitless because He's limitless. Yeah? And we can never stop anywhere on the journey, no matter how great the season is. Yeah? I mean, think about the disciples who were with Jesus on Mount, Mount Transfiguration. I'm not surprised they wanted to build houses there. Who wouldn't want to do that, hey? You know? Let's stay here. Let's not go back to that other thing, you know? And Jesus said, well, actually, if we go back there, we can go beyond what, what's happening here. <laughs> yeah? And so, again, Jesus was challenging the way they thought because they, because they thought, hey, this is it. Well, there's nothing that's actually it because there's always more in God. <laughs> always. And that's the exciting part about his kingdom, you know. If, if it's just about the church as we know it, you know, the organized church, then we can stop anywhere we like, I guess, you know. And many groups have it too, you know. But if it's about his kingdom, then it, it's always unfolding because there's always more in God. That's exciting, eh? Hey? So when Jesus said, seek first, seek above everything else, his kingdom and his right order of things, which starts with a reordering of our thinking, I believe, you know, he was actually bringing to a, a fine point what he'd been saying, you know, previously. And he'd been talking about, you know, um, you know that if the, if the father looks after the, the lilies of the field, isn't he going to look after you? And all these kind of things, you know? Don't worry about what you're going to wear, you know. I mean, we think about it because, well, it's a bit warmer today, you know, so, um, so we're not going to wear a heavy jacket, you know. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We're not, we, we, we can't be um, uh, thinking about things the way the world thinks, right? Which is why, why Jesus said after Matthew 6.33, because all, you know, all the things that Gentiles pursue, the Father will add to you. This is why we don't pursue what the world pursues. This is why we think differently from the world we're in. We're in. This is why we have different values and priorities and everything else, because our life is being progressively reordered according to God's pattern, His kingdom pattern. Um, so, and the key to that is seeking first His kingdom. So let's go back to earlier in this chapter and see what Jesus said that He then carried all the way through to finish up with what I've just been saying. And uh, this is called mostly the Lord's Prayer, or the pattern prayer, or the model prayer. Um, I've renamed it, because I can. <laughs> well, in my little world of influence, I can. Uh, I call it the Kingdom Prayer, because it's actually principles of prayer in the Kingdom. I don't believe it was ever supposed to be just um, memorized and recited. You know, I, I just don't believe that at all. Because Jesus is teaching principles of prayer. And so he's talking about the hypocrites and everybody else and how they pray and how they parade themselves and, and, and all these kind of things. And then um, verse, uh, verse 8, he says, Do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Now, we know this, except mostly we don't actually live by this, hey? <laughs> True? <laughs> yeah, we, we know it's in there, but it's actually not how we think. Yeah? But our Father does know the things we have need of before we ask Him. Therefore, in this manner, pray. So on the basis of that we're not going to be hypocrites and we're not going to parade ourselves in prayer and in the things of God, we're going to, we're going to walk lowly and we're going to walk humbly and we're going to trust God, trust the Father, that He knows what, what we need and He's going to provide, right? On the basis of all of this, then here's some principles of prayer, Jesus is saying. And the interesting thing is that this, this group of verses here a book ended by the kingdom. It starts with the kingdom and finishes with the kingdom. So guess what? 
These principles of prayer are all about the kingdom and a kingdom perspective on the things of life. All right? So firstly, our Father in heaven. Well, guess what? He's our Father. <laughs> Which makes us his sons. And we know we have the right to be his sons. You know, John 1, 12 and 13. If we've received, believed on him and received him, we have the right to become sons of God. All right? And so this is our right. It's our privilege. And so because we're sons, we then come to our Father. And why do we do that? Because sons know their Father's going to take care of them. This is intrinsic to the relationship. You know? There's something badly wrong in a father-son relationship if a son can't trust the Father to take care of him. True? And of course, our Father, our Heavenly Father, is so far greater than any human father. No matter how good a father a human is, um, you know, the, the, our Heavenly Father is great. He's, he's perfection when it comes to fathering and fatherhood. And so we are His sons. He's given us the privilege, the right to be His sons. Therefore, we approach Him as sons to a father. And this is important because the Father bestowed the kingdom on His Son, Jesus. And what did Jesus do? Jesus bestowed the kingdom on His spiritual sons, the disciples. It says that in Luke 22. As the Father has bestowed the kingdom on me, I bestow the kingdom on you, he said. Amazing, hey? Because this is what fathers do. They give good gifts to their children. Sometimes the good gift is a kick up the backside. Because <laughs> that's good in the long term. <laughs> you know what I'm saying this morning, hey? <clears throat> so this is, this is about alignment and positioning. So that prayer in the kingdom... It's not about being in panic mode, you know, and saying, God, if you don't come through, my whole world's going to fall apart. That's not what sons do. Sons have a confidence that their father's got it, in, got it all in hand. Yeah? So this is the starting point for prayer in the kingdom, is this confidence in our father because we're his sons and because we know who he is. Isn't that awesome? Okay, the next line, hallowed be your name. Well, this isn't just a you know, a nice statement or something. And by the way, when the Bible says, uh, you know, in the name of, you know, it, it doesn't just mean we're invoking some magical thing, you know. Because <laughs> people have argued, theologians have argued, is it in the name of Jesus or is it in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and all of this kind of stuff. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter which name of God you, we, we use. It doesn't matter how many of them we use. The principle is not, you know, using a particular name. Because in Jewish culture, which obviously the Bible was written in, you know, and the New Testament was written out of that foundation, the whole concept of the name is about the identity of the person and the authority of the person. So when we honour his name, we honour who he is and we honour the fact that he's got all authority. No one else has greater authority. And so even to say that we honour his name, which is what hallowed means, to honour his name means we're actually, again, aligning and positioning ourselves in the context of who he is to us and the authority he has, which he gives us. Jesus said in Matthew 28, um, all authority has been given to me, go therefore. And this is the principle here, that to honour his name is actually about, um, uh, you know, uh, aligning with who he is and positioning ourselves in relationship to the authority he has and that he's given us. And this makes, this makes prayer powerful because all of a sudden we've got, um, uh, we've got something here that's tangible and we know it's going to produce outcomes because authority produces outcomes. Yeah. All right. So, so then your kingdom come. Whose kingdom? Well, the Father's kingdom. Yeah. And of course he bestowed it on Jesus who is the king, Jesus' kingdom. And our desire, our heart's cry has got to be, we want to see your kingdom come more and more in its fullness. Now, you know, when you start talking about kingdom, firstly there's going to be some people who think you're JWs. <laughs> when we called our church Kingdom Life Church... We had people saying, well, won't the J JWs kind of think we're part of them? Or won't people think it's a kingdom hall or something? <laughs> I 
Well, no, we're not talking about that kind of kingdom. We're talking about a kingdom that's not from here. <laughs> it's a kingdom from heaven. It's a spiritual kingdom. Yeah. But you know, also there are people who think the kingdom has come and that's it. And then there's people who think the kingdom has not come. One day it's going to come. <laughs> it's true. Right? But the, the thing about God is that he has a starting point and then things unfold until there's eventually an end point. And this is what his kingdom is like. Jesus brought the kingdom. And we were talking about this in School of the Kingdom on Wednesday night. It's so clear when, when we get into the original language in the New Testament that Jesus brought his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, he brought it to earth. And so the kingdom has come. But then the kingdom one day will come in all its fullness, in all its glory. And in the meantime, his kingdom keeps coming more and more. More and more of its fullness. And so our cry and our, again our position has got to be that we want to see his kingdom more and more fulf you know, um, fulfilling its purposes in our lives and more and more its purposes fulfilled through our lives. Yeah? So that his kingdom is continually being um, you know, expanded or increased in the earth. This is the whole point. And, um, and so when we say your kingdom come, we're actually aligning ourselves with the Father's will that his kingdom more and more invades every part of our lives and every part of the planet. Yeah. Because in Isaiah 9, 7, it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. So this is not just an eternal kingdom. This is a always increasing or always advancing kingdom. This is why we're to pray, your kingdom come. That it will continually increase and advance through our, connect, you know, through our connection with heaven and, and what we download from heaven and what God does in us and what God does through us. Is that good? Then your will be done. Well, here's the thing. Where the kingdom is, there's the king. Because you can't have a king without a kingdom and you can't have a kingdom without a king. I was saying on Wednesday night, there is no such thing as a king in exile. Because if, if a king's in exile, he's not a king anymore. He doesn't have a kingdom. Someone else has got it. <laughs> so here's, here's the deal. The king is not here in the flesh, but he sent his governor, the Holy Spirit, to represent him. So he's still the king of the kingdom on earth. Just like the monarch in, in, in Britain isn't here in the flesh, but we have a governor general who's their appointee. And so this is still part of the British Commonwealth, you know, part, part, part of the... Um, uh, under the monarchy, you know. So your will be done. The thing about a kingdom is that in a kingdom, the king's will is done. Now, if you've ever watched you know, movies from centuries ago, to, particularly to do with Britain and other kingdoms, you know, if the king's will's not done, there's some severe consequences. There can be, you know. Uh, you know, the, the worst consequence is off with your head. <laughs> or you'd be locked up in the tower in the dungeon for however long, you know. Uh, there can be all kinds of consequences um, if the king's will is not done. Right? So the principle, I'm, I, you know, I'm not wanting to talk about consequences, I'm, I'm wanting to talk about the principle of how, uh, how that these two things go together. That in a, in a king and a kingdom, and kingdom must have a king, but then in a kingdom, the king's will is done. Because that's just how it is. Yeah. And so when we pray, your will be done, we're actually, again, aligning ourselves properly, positioning ourselves uh, accurately with regard to the king of the kingdom. It's cool, hey? And so this, this whole pattern of prayer here and all these principles of prayer, they begin with all about the kingdom. The father who gave the kingdom to the son, the identity and authority of, the, of those who are over us in this kingdom, the fact that his kingdom keeps on coming more and more in its fullness, keeps on rolling out, and that his will is, be, is being done, you know, wherever uh, he is king, you know. And then it says on earth as it is in heaven. Well, I get more specific than that when I pray. I want it to be done right here, right now as it is in heaven. Because <laughs> on earth can be anywhere, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we have, um, we have networks, you know, uh, here in Australia and in other nations and whatever. And, and this is how I pray, God, let your will be done. You know, in so-and-so's ministry, in such-and-such a city or whatever, as it is in heaven. Because this is God's plan 
that whatever he's determining in heaven, we should actually see out working here on earth. Yeah? And, and this is why the Holy Spirit is so important as the governor of the kingdom, because he's the one who actually lets us know what is being transacted in heaven so that we can get into line here on earth. So we can actually outwalk the stuff that heaven's determining on the earth for our lives. Amazing, eh? Hey? All right? So this is the, the introduction to this, this prayer, all about the kingdom. And then if we go uh, to the end, he says, for yours is the kingdom, right? It's not ours. <laughs> it's not ours. You know, when our mindset changes, our language changes, all right? So in the kingdom, everything's his. So it's not my church. It's not my calling. It's not my gifting. It's not my ministry. <laughs> it's his. Yeah, it's his. Because when, when we really begin to get a kingdom mindset, then out of the way we think, we speak. So our language must change as our mindset changes. Yeah? And so it's his kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. So at the end of this, again, we're about realigning, fine-tuning, you know, and, and establishing, you know, our, our alignment with him. Yours is the kingdom. It's all about you and your kingdom, you know. In fact, our church, my, you know, um, international ministry, everything, our statement is we're honouring the king and advancing his kingdom. That's it. Yeah. If we don't honour the king first, well, then we might be advancing something else. <laughs> which has often happened in the past, you know. But if we're truly honouring him in the way we've talked about today, then guess what? Out of that, we're going to advance his kingdom because the Holy Spirit's going to lead us to do that. And it's his kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. In other words, you're, you have all the authority. Right? You are, as the, the, like one of the songs we were singing this morning, all things come from him and all things return back to him. Yeah. Because his is the kingdom. And then yours is the power. Because if, if it's his kingdom, he's got the authority and power. And we, are, we don't have it. We walk in that. He authorizes us, but it's his authority. It's his power. And, we, and that's what we walk in. And I have to say to you that because of that, we, we actually don't need buildings to fulfill our ministry in the earth. We don't need pulpits. We don't. We don't even need to have a brand name. <laughs> oh no, I'm rattling some thought, thought processes now. <laughs> but I've said for years, I don't need a pulpit to fulfill my calling. Because it's actually about how we align with him and how we influence people. It doesn't mean we throw everything away. What it means is we, we see it all totally differently. The building's just a facility for the, what the king wants to be done to happen. And not just in, but out from. Which is what you guys do in your community and, 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 and internationally too, you know. And, um, you know, and, and this thing here, well, actually, it's, a, it's just a lectern, you know. It's, again, it's just, a, it's just an aid. <laughs> because otherwise I'd have nothing to put these things on, you know. <laughs> Whereas years ago, you know, we used to talk about the pulpit like it was some holy thing. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah, you know, and, and we'd have church leaders saying, I don't let it just anybody in my pulpit, <laughs> you know, oh, I understand the principle, but the pulpit's nothing. <laughs> Are we okay? Are you still my friends? <laughs> you see, the power of God's in us because the kingdom's in us. It's not in our building, it's not in our structures, it's not in our furniture, you know, you know what I'm saying, hey? <laughs> and I'm not trying to put anything down or anyone down, please don't, don't get me wrong here. I'm trying to establish a principle that is actually all about him, you know, and he's changing how we see everything so that we will more completely and more accurately fulfill his purposes in the earth. Isn't that awesome? So that there will be an even, even louder, well done, good and faithful servant when we walk through the gates of heaven. Amen? Alright. And then yours is the glory. You know,
know, for so long as a preacher, hasn't been like this for many years now, but previously, before that, you know, we, we used to say, oh, to God be the glory, you know, and yet actually we attracted all the attention to ourselves. <laughs> and we had a whole system to do that. <laughs> Come on, is this true or not? <laughs> it is. <laughs> but, you know, in the kingdom, it's not about how people see us. It's not about how they see our organization or the work we do. It's, it's about how they see him in us and through us. Absolutely, you know. And that, that's, that's, um, that can be a big shift sometimes, you know, particularly if we're ingrained with some thought processes and perspectives and, and whatever, you know, over a long time. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a bit like saying, well, you know, I've been working on this mindset for a few decades now and you, and you tell me it's wrong? <laughs> Come on, I fine-tuned this mindset I have. This perspective I have really worked for me. <laughs> but seriously, this is because God's actually doing a new thing in the earth. Yeah? And we all want to be a part of it, you know? We all want to go where God's going. Um, but it's all about him, and it's all about his kingdom. And therefore, if, 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 if the way we think and the way we perceive things changes, then um, we're not going to draw the glory to ourselves. We are going to actually, you know, make sure it goes to him in every way. Yeah? So here's the thing. In the middle of the body of this, this um, group of uh, verses, it says, give us this day our daily bread. Well, I don't know about you, but I was taught this is how you pray. Oh God, I need you to help me pay my bills, you know. And have not quite enough money for shopping this week, God help me, you know. Now that's okay, but there's a there's there's a whole other thing in the kingdom. Right? <laughs> Forgive us our debts. So we're talking about provision, right? We're talking about um, you know uh, our trespasses, so we're talking about freedom, liberty. Right? Then, do not lead us into temptation. So we're talking about victory. Okay? And deliver us from the evil one. We're talking about protection. Yeah? So four main principles in there. Okay? So our provision, um, our freedom, our victory, and our protection. And I was taught, right from my earliest memories as a kid, to ask God for these things. And I'm not saying it's wrong to ask him for them. I'm saying there's a different perspective when we come to understand the kingdom. Because if, if, if this is about aligning with who he is, our father, therefore I'm his son, so therefore I have total confidence he's going to, you know, take care of everything. And by the way, he's got it in hand before I even know what I'm going to need. Alright? Yeah? So therefore, am I going to be panicking, going, oh God, you've got to feed me today. Because if you don't, I'm just going to starve to death. <laughs> no. There's a confidence then. Yeah? That if he's our father in heaven, we honor his name, his identity, and his authority, and so on. We're, we're, his kingdom keep is continuing to come into our lives and through our lives. His will is being done in us and through us, you know, here on earth as it is in heaven. Then guess what? Provision flows. <laughs> There's always bread on the father's table. Yeah? Different perspective, eh? Hey? So then, if there's no bread on the table, we have confidence that the Father's going to figure it out. So then we come with a whole different heart and different mindset to, to talk to Him about that. Are you getting this? Yeah. When God showed me this, it absolutely challenged why I thought. <laughs> but boy, has it liberated me. It really has. All right? And then forgive us our trespasses. Well, we don't have to repent every day. Did you know that? <laughs> you see, repentance is not just, oh, I've blown it again, God, I'm sorry. Help me not help me to be stronger tomorrow. It, it, in the kingdom, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, we're, we're forgiven. You see, repentance, the word repent actually means to think after. In other words, how am I going to think after I come into the kingdom? 
I'm going to think differently. Therefore, I am going to be different. So I don't have to repent every day. I've got to think differently every day. And then I'll live differently. I'll speak differently. Which is what we used to call living a life of repentance. Yeah? You see, this... No, that's another sermon. I won't go there. Did, but did you get that same thought? All right? Because this is, this is a whole different perspective in the kingdom. In the kingdom, the king's not wanting us to grovel before him every day. He actually wants us to walk in his authority and power. All right? So we're not repenting of sin every day. We've been given dominion over sin. The Bible says. Is that a true statement? It is. We've been given dominion over sin. So we don't have to ask for forgiveness every day. We actually have to think the way our king thinks and we will therefore speak and live and do the way our king would. Alright? I'll leave that one with you otherwise I'm going to get totally sidetracked. <laughs> and then... Do not lead us into temptation. Well, this is about victory. This is the dominion over sin part, right? And then deliver the, us from the evil one. This is not because he's going to devour us, right? But this is because um, uh, it can be from the evil one or from evil, all right? This is protection. So that if our guard is down at any point, our Father's going to take care of it. Isn't that good? Yeah? All right? And so we pray these things totally differently. And so this is what Jesus said to them. Don't be like the hypocrites. Don't parade yourselves. Don't, you know, draw the, the attention and the glory to yourselves. Um, but you know that your father, you know, you're his sons, your father, um, knows the needs you have before you even ask him. So then this is the way you pray, these principles. And then you don't have to worry about what you're going to wear tomorrow. You don't, don't have to worry about if there's going to be food on your table tomorrow. Don't have to pursue all the things the Gentiles seek after. What we have to do then is in the light of this, seek above all else his kingdom and his order of things, his light order. And everything that we need is going to be there somehow, some way, in his time. And everything the Gentiles are pursuing and killing themselves trying to get, our Father is going to make sure we walk in. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And you know, um, the thing about this is it takes some processing. Right? Because I've thrown a few bombs today. <laughs> I think. <laughs> but, you know, um, I want to pray now, and I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will actually... Um, you know, cause the, the, the seeds of, you know, the, of, of his word to, to be you know, built you know, deep into our lives, that they'll take root deep into our hearts. 